Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, call this meeting of Capital Program Committee to order Thursday, October 13th, uh, a few minutes after 10 a.m. Uh, this, this meeting is being audio and video recorded. Anything you say or show on the screen will be broadcast on the town's YouTube. Please act accordingly. I think a motion to approve the agenda. So, okay, um, we're hybrid, so I'll have to do a roll call. Uh, Jill, on your motion. Aye. PJ. Aye. Christy. Aye. I'm and I myself. Aye. Richard and Barry. Hi. Very welcome. Good morning. Okay. Uh, public comment. Is there anyone uh, public comment on a participant oh, tour? What's going on? Dion? Okay. Thank you. You're muted. If you have a public comment, just please raise your hand and we'll get you up. Okay. So, uh, Appears to be no members of the public present and no public comment. Uh, election of officers. Um, we're at that point, I guess, we're a little bit behind schedule for um, re-election of officers. Would anyone like to volunteer for a position? <laughs> no, wait, uh, Christy, is he coming back or did he see this on here? And he, I'm teasing, oh, I'm teasing. Sorry. I guess I have that back. face that people don't know when I'm joking. <laughs> Comes in handy. Like, it's good in person because we know he did. Yeah, it comes in handy. We want to wait for him. Yeah, I think that would be appropriate. Um, why don't we we can skip yeah. to minutes, potential adoption of minutes. Can we get a motion to adopt the minutes of July 14th as revised and September 29th? So moved. On your motion, Richard. Aye. Jill? Aye. BJ? Aye. I'm an aye. And Barry? Aye. Okay, great. So those pass unanimously. Um, in a few minutes, we're going to open up uh, fiscal year 24 capital request and out your discussion for sewer and stormwater. Uh, David, what we'll do, we'll just go through sewer as per normal. Um, go through if anyone's got a question, I'll recognize them and we'll just do them as we go. Your your uh, request items are typically a little larger than some departments, so it'll be good to break them down discussion wise. And then um, after that, we'll move on to stormwater. Um, Yeah, new chairman. <laughs> it works. Yeah, you it. <laughs> it works. All right. So, uh, election officers, um, would someone like to make motion? I'd like to make a motion to nominate Richard to be vice chair. Okay. Um, thank you, Jill. On your motion. Okay. PJ. Uh, sure. Yes. Christy. No, I, I. Uh, Barry. Aye. And I'm an aye. Uh, do we have a motion for a chair? I. Nominate Stephen Walsh. Second. second that. I'll accept. Um, <laughs> on your motion, PJ. Aye. Uh, Christy. Aye. E excuse me. Who did he nominate? I didn't. Oh. <laughs> me. I nominated. Steve <laughs> I don't mean as chair as um secretary. Oh, Richard. No, Richard uh, we is. Didn't, we didn't do secretary you, yet. We did vice chair. You did vice chair as Richard, and I thought. I thought no. someone said secretary. He was doing the chair. He um, talks so me, fast and he's so far away. I kind of missed it. Let me recap, Terry. So we <laughs> nominated and voted Richard as vice chair. We're in the midst of a vote on me as chair, and then we'll proceed to secretary, OK? OK. okay thank you. Um, Barry, on the chair position? Aye. Okay, and I'm an I also, so that carries unanimously. Do we have a motion for secretary? Um, actually, before we get into secretary, can we have just a brief description of the work? Relatively high, heavy lifting, middle, low. Low, okay, low. That's from our prior secretary. Um, would you, it'd be nice if the outgoing made a uh, motion to... <laughs> Sorry, Every, I'm everyone's confused. looking at you, Jill. Um, well, Jill, would you be willing to accept if I move on secretary? Yes, it's, it's very low list. ceremonial. Okay. Yeah, well, I mean, no, but it, I don't it, want to keep notes. Don't uh, just mean, while we're discussing it. It's not ceremony to the extent of two members are absent, but chair and vice chair, then you chair the meeting. Okay. So that's fine. Okay. So I nominate Jill B. Thank you. On your motion, Richard. Aye. Uh, PJ. Aye. Christy. Aye. Barry. Aye. I'm an aye. And Jill on the motion. 
All right. Okay. So we've got uh, Jill as secretary, Terry. All right. We're going to move right back to uh, Sewer and uh, David, if you want to take the floor, top to bottom, right to left. Good morning, everybody. It's nice to see everybody <coughs> after all the years of being out. Um, yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, well, we'll start off with the one that's been kind of hanging here for a while now, and that's the Baxter Road Sewer Design and Construction. Um, there is a preliminary design that's been done. Um, we haven't lost too much out there. Um, in the last couple of years, it's, it's, the winds have been very strange, and we haven't had any of the north, the good nor'easters and easterly wind. It's been a lot of southwest, southeast winds. So, and with the geotube still in place, we haven't lost much of Baxter Road. So, we kind of try to want to move that out yet another year. It's just been a placeholder um, for numerous years now, but it's inevitably it's going to come. And it's going to entail all town infrastructure to be moved. And we have new roads in the back and coming off of Hopeless Road and easements <laughs> and everything else like that. So it's just a continuation of the last few years, just so that it's it's there. We know it's we know it's coming at some point. We just don't know when yet. Okay. Um, um just on Baxter, David. Um I don't want to wade into this too deeply. Actually, I don't even want to wade into the shallows on it. But while you're here, um, your thoughts on the 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 effectiveness of the geotube system? I mean, it seems that it helped, or is it the wind? I think, you think or some of both? I think it's helped. I think that probably a little bit of both, but I, I believe it has helped to a point. But I'm not a scientist or anything like that. Yeah, just, no, I'm just curious. What you're... But the wind, but it's been very strange, and anyone that's been here long enough says that we don't have so it's southeast and southwest storms as we in the wintertime, but we've had quite a few. So. Okay. okay, and then just to, to for the sake of you know moving through the agenda, but being able to focus on things effectively, anything that's outside of uh, fiscal year 25 will skip. Okay, I can... unless there's something that you want to broadcast in advance. You know, no, what I mean? not yet. I don't, I mean, okay. I won't go any past. Yeah, no, just so you know. Airport Road um, pump station, um, it's actually uh, in design right now um, in prior um, prior authorizations. Um, but you see that on 26, that's just a maintenance thing going out. Um, that one's about not too far. Um, the CMOM stuff, again, we're trying to continue out with the um, Two million a year to take and continue um, repairs and maintenance. Um, I I have a lot of maps and stuff. I didn't bother to put it in the packet because a lot of them are big, just stuff that needs to be done, stuff that we've done. Um, one of the things that has saved us an incredible amount of money over the past few years is the um, lining of the mains that we've been doing. Um, we did get a cost estimate. Say if we had to take and excavate all of Eastern Street um, in the area that we just lined. It probably would have been anywhere from 10 to 12 million dollars just because of the amount of dewatering and everything. And we did it under the CMO two million dollar thing by lining everything. Um, and the lining has been pretty, it's pretty incredible. It's it's really uh, taken a lot of water. We've taken a well over a quarter of a million gallons a day of just high high in the um, Eastern Street area. So this is just continuing going on. I mean, it's, we're just slowly working around the island and getting stuff. Replaced, repaired, and in line. So um, again, that's been going on for a few years now. Okay. Any questions for David on that one, Jill, and then Richard? Did um, just generally speaking, David, the um, pipes you're changing them from what size to what size? What we're doing is on anything that's we find that's six inch, automatically gets upgraded to either eight or ten, depending on either. The master plan and the flows that are going on in the area. Um, one example is right where we are now. Um, we have eight inch pipes on Sparks and then comes across the property, but West Creek Road is six inch. Mm -hmm. So we're going from eight and we're reducing down to six. That line is slated to be replaced. However, we're looking at this potential major development going on behind us. Right. So, um, but anything that's six inches automatically gets upsized to eight. 
or, or bigger. Um, and then we take and we, we look at the area we're in. It's either going to be eight or 10 inch. We don't go usually above 10 inch just because of right now it's availability of pipe. Mm. But um, 10 inch is more than suffice to handle huge amounts of flow. So. so how come everything doesn't just go to 10 inch? Just because a lot of times they are in areas, but if say we have a small street, say we have one coming up on King Street in Swansea. Um, there's just so much in the road already and the street's so small to put a 10 inch in is just yeah, really the conflicts with too much. So uh, we try to take and go to either eight or 10 um, instead of going too much bigger. So gotcha. Okay, thank you. Richard, uh, when I looked at the supplemental documents, there was a, uh, a downloadable email that talked about a grant. It's not there now, so I assume that was just a mistake. It was it was duplicating the uh, PowerPoint presentation. There yeah, was not, a PowerPoint. I'm not sure about that, but there is some grant money that um, ultimately the town is going to look at, not only for sewer stuff, but they'll ultimately look at for some stormwater stuff. So. Um, that might have just been something that was a discussion, but it just wasn't. It's not there. Now, so. Yeah, it's not going we'll forward at this point. So maybe we'll put no sewer and stormwater uh, grant funding as a question later when we get the funding sources. There's um, a lot of money out there right now, for, especially stormwater. Yeah, let's let's get it. Um, David, I got a couple of questions for you on the. Do you have? I mean, I'm not looking for exacts, but rough percentage of the overall system that's been scoped. We have scoped all 330,000 linear feet. It's all been cameraed already. <clears throat> now we're just in a lot of the construction phases and going into repairs and everything. We've and probably you, done maybe 100,000 linear feet or a little better already of repairs and lining and spot repairs, et cetera, like that. So we got, we're about a third of the way through so approximately. And we're, and we're moving along it all the time. I mean, it's, you know, we found, just found another issue down on some Dover coming on. Yeah, it's, it's on the line to be fixed, but we now have the manhole. It's collapsing a little bit quicker than anticipated. So mm -hmm. um, it's, the program is working exceptionally well. Um, if anything that came out of the consent order we were under, this was a very much needed project and the CMOM whole part of it and planning going on. Mm -hmm. And we do have a living document that we update every year. Um, we have, uh, since we've started our project, we have been able to get the consent order rescinded by uh, EPA, so we are no longer under a consent order anymore because of the amount of work that we've done. But as long as we continue going on, we won't have any issues. So. And this has been going on for, I mean, the CMOM has been five years now? It's about five years coming up, yeah. yeah. And, and uh, the first three, the first couple of years, a lot of just scoping and planning. So, uh, and that's going to be similar to what we talk about seeing on what's going to happen with that stormwater. Sure, the stormwater. So with the scoping out of the way, do you, how long do you think it, I mean, yeah, this, it's just general information. Um, do you think it will be before we get through the remaining two thirds? The way things are going, and we have quite a bit coming up this year that they're going to be doing. Um, the only thing now that's holding us back and slowing us down is supply and demand. We Getting, cannot get, yeah. we can't get fittings, we can't get pipe. So it may be still pushed out a couple of years, but you know, we're, we're trying to get as much material on the island as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I asked not so much, um, you know, I, I think we all understand you guys are prioritizing the work. So you're taking care of the things that really need to be taken care of. And then you've got a list, medium priority, and then kind of like a cleanup, you know, maybe the last third or quarter will be cleanup stuff. I um, was more trying to just get an understanding for general information, but also, to see when, you know, when this might come off as a line item and, or would you think that you'll carry this for maintenance and repairs, convert this into a line item that's maintenance and repairs? I think ultimately we'll end up doing that. Um, and it probably won't necessarily need to be too million. Yeah, we might be able to reduce that some, but once we get the system up, Sconset, we still got a ton of work to do. Um, and we're starting at the level five, the critical stuff that really needs to be done and working our way down. So we're still going through a lot of category five stuff. We have Vestal Street coming up, um, yeah. which is a category five and a half. I mean, that's another bad area, but so we're slowly picking away as, as quickly as we can. But right now we were just told the other day, it's like a 48 week lead time for certain type of materials. 
And last question on this one is the Wisconsin sewer work you're talking about is repair and maintenance as opposed to the new project that it is all it's all repair and replacement okay. stuff that's coming on the seafarm program. The backs the road, the new stuff will be separate. Okay. Um great, that's helpful. And then the last question is on the Pleasant Street. You know, you guys have been great. Uh you and um uh want to comment in terms of you know coordinating when you open things up. So I presume that to the extent there's any work over here, that's still on the table. What about sidewalk? That approach is still on the table. What about sidewalk work? Sidewalks, um, for I know example, the four space. Yeah. Um, we had there was five um, bid ultimates in there for a lot of sidewalk work um, and bump outs and stuff like that. Whenever we go down a road, normally because they're so small, everything comes up. All the sidewalks come up, everything. And what we've been doing with the force main specifically is we're categorizing the number in every single piece we take out because the historic commission was pretty adamant that it had to go back exactly the way we took it out. Um, Step lane sidewalks are gone. Most of Center Street, one side will be gone and going down the road. We are putting back the sidewalks with existing material as best we can. All curbing is getting replaced with existing as is available or whatever's approved by the towns as far as DPW standards. And like um, Pleasure uh, Sparks Ave coming up, that goes from like asphalt to brick to concrete to. We're trying to clean a lot of that up as we go through and, and standardize everything, standardize the curb heights and all that other stuff. So sidewalks are a part of it. A lot of times it'll be an all bid alternate, which will supplemental and come out of DPW's um, projects. But we're not forgetting anyone in the town. It's not just water, sewer and stormwater. It's just, it's DPW roads. Um, we are working very closely now with all the utility groups. We're trying to get them on board. Um, you know, if we're going to say we're going up step lane now, we've already called and said, hey, what are you going to need for power at the veranda house? Supply us the pipe, we'll put it in the ground. Mm -hmm. Why we have the trenches open. That way we don't have to dig it up in two years yeah. or whatever. So it, it's it's getting better with the other utilities. Um, it's been tough because they have to talk to their engineer, mm -hmm. they have to talk to that engineer. Mm -hmm. If it's something like conduit where a lot of times we're just going to try to put it in the ground and that way it's done. Okay. Yeah. Last, last question. So with respect to this potential development over on Pleasant Street, are you, are you, is your department and the workload flexible enough, you know, due to the workload that you could be, the work you need to do in this area could coincide with that development? One thing that we're looking at, and I presented, I put some documents into the, for the planning board meeting tonight, which I'm going to attend, um, that with the new sewer regulations now, it's in there that developers and developments have to start to pay for a lot of infrastructure improvements. And one of the things that I'm pushing, especially I can, is you know, West Creek Road, for them to pay for that to get replaced. Whether it gets, they give the town the funding and the town bids it out, or they do it privately on you know, with their contractors and they have to worry, don't have to worry about procurement or, or whatever. We are, watching this very carefully because it's not only going to affect us, it's going to affect stormwater and water. Mm -hmm. um, so it will be, and we have some contracts <laughs> in place right now with local contractors and a couple of off-island contractors for on-demand stuff. So we're kind of thinking ahead on a lot of that. And that funding you're talking about, you're talking about that's separate and apart from anything the planning board has uh, the ability to do. This is due to the storm, the sewer regs. This is well, the sewer regs and the, the fact that when they're adding 62 more bedrooms that we don't have the capacity. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's, we're trying to, I, I get sent all the planning about stuff all the time. So I'm constantly trying to look at it and this one really is sticking out, so. Okay, fair enough. That's helpful, thank you. Um, why don't we move on to, do you want to hit the Maddock at Warren's Landing or do you want to just jump yeah, I'll, down? I'll hit those real briefly and quickly. Okay. Um, Maddock at Warren Landing is still in discussions. Um, at initially, it was priority one on the needs areas. Um, is it still priority number one on the needs areas? We're, we're still evaluating that. So this, again, could be one of those projects that get moved out. Um, we are looking at probably you know, with coastal resiliency now that we have to add into every one of our projects, that number could very well go up substantially. But this is... This is a placeholder for Madigan based off some town meeting votes. And there's nothing in town meeting 
this one coming up, but um, it could very well come back next year, year after. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, you, we're also looking same thing when you get into um, you know the the Sconset stuff coming up. That's again a lot of a lot of sewers in Sconset aren't even six inch. A lot of them are four inch, and we run into a lot of five inch octagon octagon um, octagonal pipe, which is the strangest looking pipe you've ever seen. But mm -hmm. it's designed originally for you know, stream or storm water, and it's in the sewer lines. Mm -hmm. So um, Sconset's again that's. Probably going to get pushed out as we do a lot of CMOM stuff on the smaller, higher critical areas. So um, that's just that, like that. It's, it's kind of like a placeholder that's in there. Um, I really, this is that big elephant in the room, coastal erosion. Um, we've lost almost 32 feet in, in the last couple of months because, again, those unusual southeast, southwest storms. We had that when um, Ian went by, mm -hmm. we had pounding for days. We lost a ton of frontage. Um, actually, it's into the dunes now. So um, the beach might be a bit, a little bit wider, but the dunes have really taken a, a beating. Right now, we're 102 feet, 106 feet to the fence, to the top of the bank. We were 142 a year ago. So um, that's going to be looked at. Um, we're going to get into uh, planning with DEP and what their thing. We right now have already shut off three. Uh, three beds close to the ocean. We have taken those offline. Um, DEP gave us the uh, approval for that. <coughs> not just not because we were worried they were the closest to the. They were the oldest beds that we had, and they didn't prick very well. And basically, we, were, we got our approval to use them now for pipe storage. We have barge loads of pipe because we had to order it ahead of time for the, the project. So we're using it as like staging for that. Um, okay. And down the line, we might have other options for those, but. Okay, Pedro. So that's five hundred thousand in next year's capital budget. Yeah, this is going to take in. Uh, it, it's it's. We're looking to go out. We have already have some funding um, available to start to look at this process. But and this is more just to try to you know consultants get a game plan on what's the best way to. And then what it. are we going to do? Are they going to have us? We have enough land inside the fence still where all of our dirt is and all of our mounds. We can clear that out. That would give us three new beds, mm -hmm. enough area. So we could take the other ones offline and build new on site. Yeah. So that five hundred thousand would probably go well into design and maybe some of the construction. Gotcha. Um, so no reason to have that in this year's. No. So you already no. have bumps that get yeah. the process yeah. going. We we still have some time depending on what happens this winter. Yeah. I mean, um, those three beds that we've taken offline were the oldest. They were back in the seventies. Right. So. The ones closest to the shore. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so David, on that. Um, before your uh, you lose your two feet and you get in the uh, concoms hundred foot zone, maybe mm -hmm. some uh, steel shoring to create a future bulkhead. Well, um, we figured we could stay outside the coastal but concom and just put steel shore shoring inside the fence. Yeah, and then be all set. Fill the beds with concrete. it will be ready. <laughs> yeah, it'll you'd be ready to roll. Yeah, uh, Christy. I was just gonna say. I mean, you know, they're way down the road. However, whatever happens with the shoreline, I mean. All of your sewer lines are committed to going to that location. Yeah. You know, so we have 15 beds all, all, all together. Yeah. Three of them aren't going to hurt us in the least. Um, and we could get a strange winter this year. We could build up 35 more yeah. feet. So um, I know that <laughs> the shoreline in Sconset, actually, in front of the beds out there, has decreased big time. Now, whether it's the, the sand from this area moving out towards Sconset, mm -hmm. but in front of the beds in Sconset, we were really worried about, but now we have almost 300 feet in front of the beds because it's been increasing up there. So no. it's shifted. The sand's going someplace. I mean, we've seen a big shift with the guys that fish. The, the whole the whole tide, the rip out there, it's all changed. It's on a totally different area. So, um, but it's the erosion seems to be pinpointed in certain areas. Now we might lose 26 feet here, but over here we only we built up four feet. Vince is working with us very closely. Every time we have a storm, Vince comes out and, and surveys everything. So we're watching it very closely. Good. Uh, <clears throat> uh, the next one is the um, new um, garage maintenance facility. Um, we have design uh, and uh, OPM funding already in place. Hopefully, 25 will be the construction year. Um, so that's just that's there, and I'm 
I'm going to work my hardest to do some build this thing for seven million dollars and more having to go there. So 13, 14 million dollars, even if I have to put it on myself. Um, you're, on I, <laughs> you're on tape. You're on tape. That's all right. Man, we've done a lot of other good stuff out there. So um real quick on that one. <laughs> yeah, Peter. Curious. Um, so that's supplemental funding. What was the original appropriation for that one? Six hundred. So that was just, just for to get, to get an OPM and then yeah, design and stuff on so board. No construction funding at anything. Yeah. No. Um, my comment, sewer area. Now this is um, needs area that was kind of prioritized as number two in, uh, in the plan. Um, this is kind of looking more like my comment might end up being in the next phase or, or Hummock Pond North or Hummock Pond South. So these numbers that are in here for Hummock Pond and another one down and then um, this one, um, Will construction happen in 25? I after we get planning and stuff done, I can't see any construction starting until probably a little later. But we wanted to have the placeholder in there so that um, everybody knows it's it's coming. Um, we have a huge demand right now for Somerset Area Raceway and all that area. That could very well be our next um, spot to tackle. So um, more to come on that as we get a little bit further along. Um, in the area. Um, <clears throat> this is another one that, you know, PFAS removal and treatment. It's coming. We already have some funding in place. Um, we are currently uh, underway right now with a lot of testing. Where we just started, we did our second round of testing the last two days to see what PFAS is actually coming into the facility. We're testing all of our incoming streams. Everything that hits the plant, we've been testing. Carpet cleaner trucks, septic trucks, um, the leachate from the landfill, brew waste, everything that's coming in. And after our first round of results came in, we found that the two biggest hits we have right now are carpet cleaners and landfill leachate. And other than that, we found very little, as far as number-wise goes, in the stream itself. We found none in our sludge from Swanson. Um, we just tested the sconce at the surfside sludge this round. But, um, and every time I say carpet cleaners, I get a look from people like, what do you mean? Carpet cleaners and Scotch Guard and all that other kind of protection. And now, now everything's still resistant. A lot of that's PFAS. It's in the carpets and, and the furniture and stuff. <clears throat> so we, um, we saw quite a bit in the, um, the carpet cleaning trucks, which was mm. pretty shocking to see the numbers. It was very relief. Big relief to see the lack of numbers in the sewer and everything else. So it's we're starting to get our baseline so we can see what's coming in. But once you find it in your discharge in your effluent, you know, there's no regulations yet as far as DEP or EPA, but they're coming. And if you find it, you have to treat it. And there's options of trying to treat it by collecting it and then shipping it somewhere, which I think would cost way too much. Mm -hmm. uh, or you go into a technology, a pilot type program or whatever to destroy it on site with high temperatures, high pressures, or DEP is looking at electrolysis. Hey, we put a couple of metal bars out into the ocean. We get all the electrolysis we ever asked for. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, PFAS is it's it's looming and it's it's, it's pretty scary, to, but we just don't know where it's going to go. So this the uh, the ten million that's here is just again that's the big O. The old factor, uh, if it gets to the point where DEP says, because the regulations are coming, you have to treat down to you know, 20 milligrams per ton or per trillion or whatever like that, we're gonna have to have a mechanism to do it. So that's why that number, and it's a high number, but it's an unknown, it's still a huge unknown, but what, what's, gonna, what's it gonna take for us to treat it right. or destroy it, so. Okay, that's an interesting one. Questions uh, for David on that one? Uh, David, I'm just curious, um, are there, are there funds we need to get in line for now or soon? And if so, is there anything we need to be doing to get in that line so we don't miss out? We have um, grant money appropriated. Well, I believe Brian is two point we have two point five million already appropriated. Two million is somewhere in that area, and that was based off a pilot program that we were given quotes on or whatever a couple of years ago. Um, technology has since changed. I mean, it's getting better and better all the time. So we have some 
funding available to if we had enough going to a pilot program to find out what we need, what we can use. Mm -hmm. That would be a year long program. So if we started something in 24, we'd have a whole year before we would know what ultimate cost would be. So the reason I ask is I understand um, there's some loans, zero interest loans being uh, from the state and that, that even some of the principal might be forgiven. But they're actually in the process of accepting applications on that now. Obviously, it's premature for your project, but the idea would be to try and forecast your needs and see if you can come up with a grant package that might get in on that. I will. I will look into that for sure. And one thing that we might be a little bit further ahead than some communities is we're testing right now. Yeah, we're testing all our inflow streams. So. That's I will look into that right away. That'll really support your applications because you've got the data in place. Yeah. All right. Um, on the clouds. The uh, phase two supplemental. We have the latest, um, which I believe you guys have in your packet, uh, of what the phase two is looking like for a total. It's about fifteen point two million. We do have some funding already in place. Um, this will be to uh, we'll finally be able to get into construction here coming up. Um, hopefully within the next year, the scoping is just about complete for it. So. And that could very well, that next phase could very well include some type of PFAS treatment. If, if, you know, if we get pushed along quicker, it might be just a matter of having to put carbon filters on our effluent. We, we haven't tested our effluent stream yet. We wanna know what's coming to us first. So um, this is all gonna hopefully Mingled together, depending on what we what we come come across. Um, the next one is an, an electric vehicle for a lot of our admin use and our engineer. Um, the town policy now is to go with at least a electric vehicle or more multiple electric vehicles. Um, I have Lauren helping me right now, um, looking through a lot of the big purchasing consortiums because there is. Everyone's advertising them on TV, but there's no vehicles available right now. Mm -hmm. They're just, or they're years out. Um, so that's what the electric vehicle, that's following the town policy on vehicle purposes. That's why that is in there. Do you have a charging station? We have, we already have the funding for the charges. It has not been installed yet, but the, the, the town has the charging station already. We have a charging station already at C Street pump station. So we have the infrastructure is in place. What's your interval on that? You know, it's eight hour charge. It's different with each different vehicle. You know, um, Greg Tivenin has a Jeep and he's getting a couple hundred miles to a charge or something like that, 300 miles to a charge. It's a four wheel drive vehicle, so it's a little bit less. And then I see Janet's vehicle plugged in once a week, maybe, or, or even less. So, um, it all depends on if we go with, they have, I think, the, and there's a Chevy Bolt or Chevy Bolt or whatever. Um, there's a bunch of different vendors out there that are that are making them, and you know, even talking to some of these very large purchasing consortiums, they just they can't get anything for electric vehicles unless unless you want to spend. You know, we've all seen that Rivian pickup truck that's driving around that electric, and that's out of like seventy eight thousand dollars, all electric. That's you know, it's all a little cost, but you know, we can get downtown and do some errands or whatever like that with it. Mm. So. So that's where we are as far as the electric vehicle goes. Um, these next couple, I had some eye opening. Um, I was at the Ford garage on, on Monday, um, speaking with them about availability and trying to get the Ford garage here to um, either bid on our bid on our vehicles, whatever, because so we can have more service. Um, and right now, um, there are no Ford chassis available. For they're looking at possibly two years just for Ford chassis. You can buy Dodge has chassis and everyone else like that. Will that be an option? Maybe because they're a Dodge dealer, maybe the ability to go into a Dodge chassis might be something the town would look at. I know we've always done Ford, but um, nothing is available. And um, they're not sure when, but the Super Duty production line has been shut down for all Fords. For I, when I was talking to Eric up there, they, they don't know what the determined time is on that. However, they do have Dodge and you see a lot of Chevys around. I, I don't know why Ford is slowing down or backing down on some of their stuff, but. I feel like I'm in an Ayn Rand movie. <laughs> so, I mean, 
we may end up being there buying something similar instead of a, you know a five fifty or a three fifty. We may end up having to go to a, a Ram. I, I was corrected. You don't call them Dodges anymore. You have to call them Ram or or another brand. Um, but service is, is huge right now. So, you know, it just there's not enough staff for the DPW fleet. Um, you can't get into the Ford garage mm -hmm. for service. I actually have two trucks right now at least two Ford trucks at least to get service because we couldn't get into the Ford garage. Mm -hmm. you know, if you buy vehicles here, we seem you seem to be get you get in quicker. Yeah. Uh, so that's you know, that's something that I'm looking at. You know, Ford Ford garage has sold a lot of companies to vehicles recently. And they were able to beat some of the state prices. So <laughs> something I'm looking at. All right. Christy. Are you, are you bound to go to Ford? Can you go to any mechanic on the island? It's it's the a lot of the stuff is um we're finding out it's a lot of warranty stuff and, and a lot of the recalls. I mean, Ford seems to have an awful lot of recalls. Yeah. And um one of the recalls on one of the trucks had to do with this, I don't know mechanics, something to do with the tie rod ends or the wire, whatever, they would put on the trucks too small and they ought to be replaced. Mm -hmm. So the lease is gonna be taking care of the recalls for us. We just couldn't get into the board line. Yeah. And the DPW couldn't do the work because automatically then the warranty was, because uh, those are warranty course, yeah. vehicles. Um, which I know, I thought they had passed the law a few years ago, but you didn't have to go to a dealership. Mm -hmm. And out here it's tough. It's tough to get. Yeah, uh, if Don Allen's your only option, <laughs> it's tough. Yeah, David, do you have any of the old Rangers? No, we don't have. We don't have any of the older style Rangers. We've looked at. I was out looking at some of these newer Rangers. Um, Thirty six thousand. Yeah. It's the ones that are sitting on a lot out there. Um, that's just for this for your basic truck. That's which is all we really need. I mean, we do need some of the heavier duty vehicles to carry stuff around for trailers, but um, it, it, we're just looking at options. I mean, Eric was saying, why don't we look at one of the um, instead of an electric vehicle, a I don't know if it was an escape or one of the uh, eco boost things, I don't know, a little tiny three cylinder engine in it or whatever mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. But the town policy right now is to purchase as much electric as we can. So we're, we're looking. Might not have any luck, but Lauren is on it for me. So, mm -hmm. Mr. Chair. Yeah. Barry is what he's using. Oh, it. Barry, please. Go yeah, ahead. thank you. Uh, Ms. Ms. Chairman, uh, just two things, uh, both through you to Mr. Gray there. Um, David, your your fleet maintenance, who's who's accomplishing that right now? Limited DPW. Other than that, we uh, like I said, we had to send trucks off island, but DPW is doing what we can, what they can. Um, if it's small minor stuff, I have staff on hand that can do minor stuff. Yeah. A lot of it we try to wait for DPW or Agosa, try to get to the Ford garage, but um, we do have two Chevy vehicles that we've purchased years ago that they wanted us to try. And we have to send those over to, to um, the Chevy dealer, Copeland Chevy and Cape. So. And you said you're also taking vehicles and exporting them off island to have someone service as well? We've had to take uh, recently two of our Ford trucks off island. We, could, we couldn't get into the Ford garage here. One of them had a front end, very critical front end issue, so. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm, I'm just wondering, because it, one thing that seems to keep cropping up, at least in, in my sphere lately, is that um, this whole idea of fleet maintenance seems to be a little bit of an issue that keeps cropping up about how do we get our vehicles serviced out here. And um, I'm not seeing a lot of successful models happening. So that that's why I'm kind of curious um, about starting to look at that. Um, just and to get a better... To get a yeah. better sense of if there's a way to start dealing with that um internally within the town and i will say uh belize was when i called them and talked to them they were exceptional they said you get your trucks here we'll put them in the line um they scheduled us for a week out but they said if you get in here earlier so i had to, i had a guy go over and take them from the boat to the dealer dealership and stuff like that so there's a little bit yep. more of an expense going off island but yeah i mean a couple of months earlier. I mean, it all starts adding up, and I'm just thinking if there's more prudent ways for us to be dealing with that. I don't want to get too far off the topic here, but you know, just I, I want to get a little bit of a sense. Um, by the time we're done, Mr. Chairman, through you, I'd, I'd like to circle back onto the Madigan Warren's Landing, Somerset area sewer. 
but I, we can wait till the end. And if you don't mind, I'll circle back. I know that's that's why I'm very, and that's the one reason why I started. I, I approached the board of garage and said, "Hey, you know, what can you yeah. guys do for Got us it. as far as purchasing local? And if they're right. serving Thank local, that's what we need." Yeah, no, I I agree, but I I know too they they're busy out there sometimes. And again, um, like I said, I I, I just want to look at this a little bit more holistically since. Um, it seems like in multiple departments, we keep running back into, you know, that all have vehicles. We keep circling back into the maintenance program really is, is not as good as it should be. Um, and, and like I said, I, I just want to get a better handle on it. So thanks. Thank you. Yeah. And at some point, uh, Barry, just on that topic, well, it's topical. We can kind of backfill you too on some of the initiatives that have started and kind of didn't work out for human resources reasons. And um, but uh, I agree the concept is an important one, and um, more so with respect to finding out that materials for repairs and parts and equipment are right. being delayed longer and longer. So it'd be I think it becomes incumbent on the town to try and forecast out. It doesn't seem like that's getting any better despite COVID having abated. It seems like for you know at least six months to a year now, we've been functioning as a as a you know capital system across the country and the world. But anyways, uh good point. Thank you. Um rinse and repeat on the uh F350, David, pretty much. Again, they chassis are not, you know. Um okay. We'll do the best we can with what we've got. Um, but I, I will have to have a meeting with with O'Brien and, and the town manager to say, can we possibly look at a different vehicle maintenance? Mm -hmm. um, I know, I know it was you know the Chevys, nice vehicles, have to go out bound for service. The Rams, we have a local dealer, it might be a viable option. But you know, the uh, the, the cost alone for the chassis right now is about sixty two thousand mm. dollars. Then you have to put a twenty thousand dollar body on them. So, but just to be clear, uh, Don Allen's the Ram dealer. Yes. So the service, obviously, because it's a new vehicle, your service interval is the same, but you have less work to do. But and it would potentially all, is still a service issue there. Or they said they tend to work on their vehicles a lot quicker. Oh, really? Than than other vehicles coming in. Okay. None of our vehicles were purchased there, but they get us in when they can. Sounds like time. Okay. Uh, Hummock Pond area. So the uh, Hammond Pond South, um, it's again, it's out a couple of years. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, um, that's uh, 26. We can, but uh, again, that's all. If Matic does not become the priority or, or, or move forward, we're going to look at Somerset. My comment, Hammond Pond North and South. That'll be our next okay. needs areas that are already listed. Um, and those are from the both from the sewer master plan and the cat and the CWMPs. Both CWMPs showed Hammond Pond North, South, and the Somerset area is all needs areas, uh, all nitrogen sensitive areas. So, and right now that's a big demand. I mean, Somerset area is probably the bigger demand of all right now. That and you know, and Hammond Pond South, which goes out towards uh, all the way up to the beach. So, um, a lot of interest in those areas. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then uh, you've got one more vehicle, same thing as the same others. exact thing. Yeah. Um, and that's, I think that's going to be across the board. And um, all the big local state vendors, they're like, yeah, you're talking two years of better out. So mm -hmm. just going to jump in on that. So you're, you know, you're two years out. Um, we didn't really get into, I mean, these are all indicated as medium. But if you're at fiscal year next year, and it's a two year out, does it become a high for the following year, which is a long way of saying, do we front load these vehicles? It's a utility in front loading them to get the appropriation to get the orders in so that when you need them, they're here. That would be helpful. We're, we're short now, still on vehicles as it is. I mean, we've, we've grown and growing pains come with that and vehicles and just having so many different projects going on and guys going every different way, vehicles, shortage is becoming a real issue um, right now. So that would be a nice thought, you know, um, did, you know, that, that last one's out on 25, you know, do we move it into 24? And that way it's like you said, you can get an order in now and you might not receive it till mm -hmm. 
24, 25. Yeah. I, just a thought. I mean, obviously run through with um, town manager finance in terms of what you're planning, yeah. but if you if availability is going to continue this way, I mean, I can't imagine that in six months they're going to cut that lead time in half. Like probably if anything, it's just going to get worse. Because there's probably so many people in front of us already waiting. Yeah. The yeah. Goes down. Okay. Well, thank you. That's helpful. Any cleanups other than berries before we move on to berry uh, and Madiket and Bridge? Brian, did you want to say something? No, I didn't know if Barry raised his hand again. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Barry, you're up. Thank you. So, Mr. Chairman, I, I might suggest to Mr. Gray there, I, I, I'd probably move that you that F550 utility uh, with the crane on it, probably into to FY24. I think you, I think Steve, you hit upon a very good point with that, yeah. and yeah. It, it would just be better if it's there for now. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate just, that. No, I think that's a good idea with a lead time like that. I, oh. Yeah. Okay. And Barry, do you um, want to add? You had some comments or questions on the medical yeah, warnings. I, I yeah, I do want to circle back on that. Um, and I, I'm just thinking at this point, I see it marked as Madiket Warren's Landing, Somerset area. Um, just having sat on the the planning board and the planning commission, you know, we're getting some pretty strong feedback from the Madiket Warren's Landing area that sewer is sewer. The idea of sewering out there is a no go. Mm -hmm. They don't want it. They, they simply do not want it. Although it was in the original uh, Madiket area plan that we did several years ago, the sentiment has changed out there tremendously. Um, I, you know, and I'm a little concerned with Warren's Landing as well, too, because they, even though they're part of that plan, they may decide in the end that they they feel that it's, it, it's a little bit of a more priority. So, and the Somerset area, I, can understand lumping them together to a certain extent, but I, I think it's time to take all three of those. And if we could segregate those out in this in this plan in terms of financing, I think that that would probably be a, a little bit more better and accurate look at what's going on and doing some better forecasting with that. Um, you know, if if, if the Madigan residents are really that adamant about not wanting sewer out there at all. That's a big that's a big decision for us to be making on a financial standpoint. So I, I think respectfully, what I'd ask is that those three be segregated out into their own separate sections. Okay. Um, thanks, Barry. Brian would like to comment. Um, the only comment that I would make is that the Mr. Chairman uh, through you is the reason that they are lumped together is that Madigate Warren's landing and have the discussion about whether we should do it or not would qualify for SRF funding on its own. Somerset yep. would not, which is why it has been lumped together to attempt to qualify it for potentially 0% funding through mm -hmm. SRF if those projects were moved together. So that's the reason that they're all put in together. Yeah, it's I, I, I hear what you're saying at this point. Um, I just, again, I'm a little concerned in terms of the decision making and how the public views that um, may not may not fare as well in the process. Um, and I think, you know, I hate to say it every time we, we bring up Madiket in terms of this, it becomes a very polarized situation. Um, and I think that's something that we need to be a little bit sensitive toward too here. Um, let's, I, I, I don't feel like it's prudent for us to keep poking the bear. Um, um, so that's why I'm asking if, if there's a better way to maybe manage those three being in together, I, I think that would just be prudent for this committee to 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 do that. Thank you. And uh, Richard, Brian, did you want to comment? <clears throat> well, the only thing I was going to say is that this has been continuously pushed out, so I don't know. I think it's more to keep it on everyone's radar than it is that it's actually going to be, because I don't know of any real serious push or internal discussions to do anything right now even into fiscal 25 but some of this is more to keep it on the radar that it may become um a project in the future i don't okay. remember what the threshold is for srf somerset was mixed in 80 percent pre pre title five is it somerset in there because it, the sewer has to go by that neighborhood originally it was originally that's why all those areas were already added to the sewer district originally that was the planned path that potentially has changed and then jill um sorry no no okay 
So I guess my comment is a couple. One is uh, no, no, wait. No, you got it. It's back. Well, why does it say medium priority if it's just something that you're going to keep keep kicking yeah. off? Again, I look at the medium. I look at the priorities when I do the roars. But we're not roaring that this year. So. I understand that, but I do take what Barry's saying is like we just keep putting it on there. That's fine with me, but maybe medium priority isn't. We can certainly internally talk about considering changing the priority. That's fine. Low, lower, medium ish. We've okay. discussed. We've yeah. discussed with the so, medical groups, and I think, like Barry said, you got a lot of pro, you got a lot of no. nay. Um, well, so I want to jump in here, and then we're going to move forward. I, 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 we don't need to elaborate on who and how with respect to the process of evaluating and assessing whether the sewer goes there or it doesn't go there. Um, you know, I, I, I'm interested in it. I'm not trying to shut it down. I just want to say that that's outside of Capcom's process. I think Barry's point is a good one. If these are going to be reevaluated or a portion of these pro this project line item due to the geographic location will be reevaluated due to public perception of the residents in those areas, that I think would be helpful for Capcom to have happen in advance, obviously. Um, so that should be put up on someone's radar, you know, obviously town manager, finance, uh, sewer, I guess, you know, Barry, I presume MPDC was involved in the uh, in planning uh, professional staff with the sewer master plan. So like that process, I'm just saying from the capital program committee point of view, it'd be helpful to kind of kickstart a reevaluation if that's what you all think is going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, so that when we get to the point that we are uh, evaluating this for a, a funding recommendation, we have a kind of a cleaner package. It's already been addressed from a policy standpoint. Um, so that's just a general comment on it. In the sewer master plan, mm -hmm. Somerset being evaluated separately, and we're working on costs now, but Again, it's still lumped in here because that was the original plan, but in the updated 2020 um, sewer master plan, Somerset was kind of called out separately. But Well, is there, I mean, I just, while we're on the topic, can, I mean, Mattaquette and Warren's Landing and Somerset are you know, geographically pretty distant mm -hmm. on a relative basis. What about, is there SRF money for Sconset? Can Somerset be lumped in with that? Well, well, yeah. They're both S. Or Somerset could be along with them with Hummock Pond. Well, Hummock Pond. That we or have Hummock Pond. Pond. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll look at those numbers. Okay, I'll work more with Brian. Just while it's brought up, I just want to yeah, you know, no. throw a, throw a some notes here. creative look at concept that. in that. Um, okay, great. So we're going to move on to the stormwater. And I think if you just briefly run through the out years, David, you know, this is a new enterprise, proposed new enterprise account. So it'd be helpful just to get a quick. Yeah, this is um, this is brand new to, to you as it is to all of us um, on the adoption of you know stormwater potentially coming all you know being a separate enterprise fund but being under the you know either uh, oversight of you know, water and sewer combined or however it ends up finally getting broken down but um, we're trying to take and plan right now ahead on some of the stuff going on so. Um, I'll start with 24, just to take and hit that. Um, you'll see Silver Street parking lot in through there. Um, this priority has kind of come up a little higher towards the medium area because of the flooding that took place on the property next door. And it's just overflowing the banks and everything down there. So this is looking to take in <clears throat> when we come by that area with the force main, we have to have some type of a supplemental funding source to do work to bring that lot so that we're not putting our water on private property. So um, we have had a preliminary number come up that just comes in just about under a million, but in a year's time or whatever, that number could go up. So we're looking for the million to get that design underway. And then as we come down through Silver Street with that force main, I'll put it out the bid, maybe the same contractor will get it, maybe not, but um, try to get all that work done in the area at the same time. So mm -hmm. um, Silver Street is a bold 
it captured everything. Um, and now you have people want to develop those two lots next to it that are in the valley. So, so we, we have to keep our water on our, our property. So it's gonna take maintenance and some planning. You're gonna throw some PFAS filters in there? Uh, I don't even want to start there yet, but um, so ultimately, you know, and to start off with stormwater, you know, Nantucket is not a regulated MS4 community based on why we don't know yet. We haven't figured out, but potentially we will become an MS4 community. And with that comes a whole bunch of new guidelines, regulations, and everything else like that. Oak balls have to be more monitored or be removed from harbors and ponds and stuff like that. So, David, give us the plug on S MS4. It's not uh, Salvadorian gang related. No, MS4 <laughs> had to do with the state of Massachusetts took its classified community area based on, um, it was based by population. Chatham, a lot of the, almost all the Cape areas, a lot of the coastal areas in Boston, but for some reason, Nantucket and Divinia were included in that, maybe because they think we have clean water. I don't know. Gotcha. But the rules are changing okay. and we, we see it coming. So in anticipation of it, we want to try to, to get, that's why we want to try to, we want to do this CMOM that we're doing now. You know, the children's beach area is, is phase one of this CMOM. What we found in the sewers was surprising. Lord knows what we're going to find in the stormwater. Mm. Might be more surprising because a lot of the stormwater goes across people's properties. So more so than the sewers did. And there's now a house where that pipe used to be. So there's a lot of pipes that have been removed mm. and taken out of it system so the, the initial phase is going to be a pretty good eye opener and then we start working our way down washington easy um, easy street and broad street we've already done some work on we put internal check valves in the outfall pipes down there and the last three high high cycles we've had we've had no water on the roads that's because of internal check valves um mm -hmm. which work we um we worked in conjunction with um an engineering firm in, in chuck larson and we installed the, the internal fittings and we were very pleasantly surprised. Now the rainwater and other things, three inches of rain, you're gonna get puddles. Yeah. But we're not getting any tidal flow into the streets now of That's those true. two areas. Which um I'm gonna uh, Barry. Yeah thanks. Uh through you to Mr. Gray there. Um David the 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 Silver Street parking lot you you mentioned you you're also going to be doing a force main through there as well did I hear? Adjacent to it, yes. Adjacent, adjacent to it. Is that included in the the improvements that you've you've got listed out here? The uh it's in the force main project itself. There are limited stuff that the scope of going into the parking lot was not part of okay. the force main project. So we have to, you know, and when all the other stuff was brought up, it's kind of taken a little bit of a higher step up to okay. uh, the, the the reason why I'm asking is so uh, the improvements to that parking lot are because it's a town-owned parking lot. Is that really where we're drilling to for this million dollars? Town-owned parking lot, which takes all the flow from Pleasant uh, Pine Street all the way up through Mill. It's it's the bowl where everything collects. And it's got yeah, I, <laughs> I've been there multiple times yeah. uh, in the yeah. past. Now I, I'm I'm just looking at it from a perspective of. Um, you know, considering where that parking lot is and what it does, I mean, it's it's you know, parking downtown is 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 a valuable commodity, but you know, parking there to get downtown is is a major hike as well too. Um, I I just want to keep focusing on the prudency of that being a town-owned parking lot um, each and every year because um, I'm not sure really what its services in the end analysis. And to keep throwing more money, and and again, like you said, just just given the 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 um, geography of it and and the topology of it, um, I hate you know I hate to keep throwing more money at things that are kind of like what is it really servicing and doing in relation to the town. So I, I just want to kind of look at it from a little bit more holistic standpoint. Thanks. I think there was a study from Brian might be. I think they did us uh, see how well used that parking lot is, and it's fairly well used, surprisingly, yeah. the amount of people that park there. Um, yeah. Well, maybe we can get some additional parking. data on that. Is that something maybe Sue you could know if that's 
readily available. Maybe Brian will know the, the history on it. Um, okay, Barry, thank you. Thank you. you. Um, Island-wide drainage improvement and... Yeah, the Island-wide drainage unit is, you know, there's, there was some planning done with DPW in the past. Um, <laughs> again, adopting some of this stuff that um, is coming our way. Um, it's what we do, piping and stuff like that. It's kind of what we do. So the DPW did have some listed areas that they had as a priority. Um, some maybe now a little bit differently and prioritize or whatever like that, but we really have to take a focus. And I think a lot of this island-wide is going to look probably at waterfront areas more so than not only with sea level rise, but the intensity of some of the storms and everything like that. Um, Brian knows all too well how the flooding goes down there. And you know, will we look at Washington Street, Easy Street as a as a as a priority? Um, we have some pretty serious issues up on Cliff Road right now with some flooding. Somerset Lane has some pretty significant issues with flooding. So um, there is a there is a list out there. Um, I don't know if I provided that to Sue or not. I might, I might have that um, we put comments on where prioritize we should maybe look at a little differently. But um, this is to take and solve a lot of problems. There's a lot of problems in a lot of areas that, and every storm we get now is one to three inches of rain, and there's a lot of puddling. Mm -hmm. And um, okay. so and, and CMOM is basically. This is basically identical to what we did with the sewer. Um, it's pro proactive. It's being proactive. Luckily, we're not under a consent order. And we, we targeted the, the Children's Beach um, tributary area first because of um, the appropriations that were gotten for the Children's Beach pump station or whatever. Is, is that the right area for a pump station? What's actually in the ground that's feeding that? We don't, you know, we don't fully know. Um, we're working very closely right now with the land bank on Lily Pond um, and Conservation Foundation and land bank down on Eastern Street. We have some pretty significant wetlands that we could use as capacity for storage. You had a major storm, use those areas of storage and then slowly feed it into a system, a pump system or whatever ends up coming up. I mean, you know, we, we've even thought out of the box of possibly pumping the water from in town, get it out of town. We have a we have infrastructure in place from the old force main that could be possibly utilized. Bring it out to up to that end of the island and treat it out there. I mean, that's with the amount of pervious properties that have been built in town recently, the water's got no place to go. And you know, the outfalls into the harbor are eventually going to be a problem um, with the mass fisheries. Okay. So um CMOM, this will be the first, the first year or two of the sewer enterprise fund or, or, or water resources division or whatever we end up calling it there's going to be a lot of investigation work and planning um there may not be a lot of shovels on the ground the, the first year or whatever like that but we may have to go in and the camera line and all of a sudden find a house foundation in the way all right now what do we do we're going to have to connect those pipes again somehow so we might have to utilize some of the CMOM money within the first year to be able to complete the surveys because if we we can only have a partial survey on this stuff. It doesn't tell us anything. Mm -hmm. We're planning on putting some flow monitoring on a lot of the storm drains and storm lines to take and find out what's going on in the storm event. Are we getting surcharges here? Why are we getting a surcharge here? Or um, the uh, Coffin Park on Cliff all ties into Children's Beach. You know, and all the Cliff Road and a lot of those areas all come through. That's all backing up every time there's a storm. Why? Well, I know of a few pipes that have been cut up because there's houses in now. So this is going to give us the roadmap of where we can go. And we might luckily find, like we did with sewer, a lot of the existing stormwater infrastructure might be able to be lined. If the host pipe is in good shape, we might be able to line it, clean it, line it, and then it'll be good for 50 years. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a lot of pieces that have to be fixed and, and put back in place. But okay. Hopefully no hexagon pipe. Yeah, yeah, none of that stuff. No. <laughs> but um there's been a lot of now, and Lily Pond, the, the land bank's doing a huge project there. And if we can work cooperatively with them and have some possibly even pre treatment at the Lily Pond before it gets into the stormwater yeah. system, that'll be huge to get rid of some of the contaminants before we even get it into our system to either send it to the harbor or wherever else. Mm -hmm. So 
we're, we're looking at a lot of stuff. Okay. Um, it's, uh, you know, my engineer at the stat, he's taken and doing a lot of the, uh, the work on the stormwater. Um, ultimately, the plan will be to hire a stormwater manager that will take and pretty much focus stormwater all the time. Um, that might be a couple of years out still, but it's something that we'll look forward to going forward. And staffing is going to be another thing. You know, we're going to have to bring on another four or five people just to be able to maintain everything. You know, we've had internal checks through the first year, or first couple of years that we take and hire out all the cleaning and all the catch base and cleaning and everything to a company, hire that out for a couple of years, get everything clean, ready to go, and then we can take over the maintenance after. That may very well be a very good idea to look at, but let's find out what happens in this first CMOM because I honestly, you know, I grew up on Westchester Street and I, I've seen a lot of building there and I don't know what we're going to find. Mm -hmm. yeah. So don't let the cat out of the bag though on that, that idea because no one's going to invest in all the equipment they need to do the first two years of cleaning and they're not going to be yeah. taking that no. contract. Anyway, and then, you know, there's a, you know, if you look on there, there's a Jettervac and stuff like that. Uh, and you know, the, the little, the first one, which is a year out or so, um, it's, it's basically a, um, it's a small track vehicle that um, can go, a lot of the storm waters in areas where we don't have, the town doesn't have easements for one. And it's in areas that we can't get our big trucks into. But you have this track vehicle um, that takes it. Um, it's on tracks, self-propelled. It has a 600 foot hose on it. But what you do is you pack the big truck on the road somewhere, attach it to this, and this thing has its own pumps and everything on it. And you can get, this could go down through Jenny's, uh, through Children's Beach area, could go down through Eastern Street, could go all through Lily Pond, uh, where we can't put a big truck. Mm -hmm. You know, will this maybe need something that we might need to look at during the first initial CMOM? We don't know. We might have to lease something or whatever. But because of the amount of storm drains that are on private property, mm -hmm. In, in easements, I mean, we can't get our trucks in there. So this is an option that we've looked at very seriously um, to be able to get into these easements to clean the line so that we can run. You know, it's, so it's, I mean, we've looked at, I've looked at all kinds of different options and, you know, Nantucket always used to use the clamshell truck, you know, and, and, and one of the things in here, is, it says a new clamshell catch basin truck. That's kind of old technology. The new technology nowadays, is, it's, it's called a backhaul. It's a smaller version back truck, but it has a jetter built into it. Um, it's it, it's the way to go. Um, I can get all these documents to you. It's something like, like this that has a bat, jetter and a combination of back. And maybe we forego the clamshell truck and go directly to this. Yeah, liquefying, suck it up. Suck it up and get it out of the way. Instead of having to go with the clamshell, then go back with another truck. And look where my can go. So we're looking ahead, and I'm looking at all different options. Um, I know right. Brian. Every time Brian sees me, it's like, oh, geez, now it's you know, it's technology changes, and I try to bring Brian into some of the stuff, and sometimes it's just like, I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> it's all good. It's um, to be able to work with his team and everything. It's just been and working with you guys. It's been great. So fair enough. We appreciate it. Questions. Christy, um, during Brian's presentation last week for us, a uh, question came up in the meeting if there's any possibility down the road of any revenue uh, in uh, producing. Uh, I think that's a great question. I think yes. Um, we have so many areas right now that people are like dewatering. Creative. <laughs> well, there's a lot of people dewatering. Yeah. Um, and all over the, and there's a right. lot of people that have pumps in their basements that are pumping them. You know what? Do like we did similar to the sewer capacity fee or whatever, and charge them a capacity fee or a betterment to pump in, whether it's by gallonage or square foot of their property, or come up with a formula and say, okay, you know, it's say like this development here, there's a massive stormwater mm -hmm. component to this. If they can't pump it into, they can't put it into our, our system we have down here in First Way. Well, it's just going to be too huge. Or the adjacent one. You know, mm -hmm. make them figure it out or make them get, you know, have them pay for it. A, an upgrade to our systems. Um, we did it with the sewer regulations, put it in the, the stormwater regulations, which are being developed. As a development comes in and puts a development in, they're going to be responsible for stormwater management, maintenance, or whatever in areas. So I think there is a possibility for um, revenue for sure, because mm. people always want to know if they can pump into our sewer. 
and boy, that's unusual um, use. There, there you go. And you know, if we could take out, we've already taken out a quarter of a million gallons on Hubbard Avenue. I mean, Eastern Street just been lining the pipes, but you still have a lot of people pumping their basements out. So yeah, charge them people for it. It's it's being done everywhere else. And you know, this might be one of the only things Nantucket's behind the curve a little bit on. But, um, it's going to take some work. I mean, it's going to take a lot of work and Brian and myself and the team just scratching our head how we do it. But, you know, you have a connection fee like the sewer and water, and then you have a capacity fee. All right. So, there you go. Other questions? PJ? Oh, just on that point, I mean, yeah, the, the idea of a kind of a displacement fee kind of piques my interest. Obviously, it'd be hard to do a retroactive work for new buildings that are, you know, going deep and displacing a ton of groundwater that otherwise we have to flow somewhere else. Um, yeah, I, I mean, there you could go say, yeah, house that's being 2,300 square feet or whatever, like you charge them with a full base. Dollar, yeah, dollar, you know, five dollars, how deep are you going? Five dollars a square foot or yeah. something, then they give you an annual that fee. Yeah, and that, and that, you know, that's what it is. I mean, it costs an X amount for a permit. Yeah. And then now you're going to know. I mean, we had an incident when I first started with the town uh, in 08 where the oil tank at the whaling museum let go into the floor. At the wind was in, the floor drains all went to the sewer. Mm -hmm. It went into our pump station and went all the way to the plant, got into one of our beds. We had to have it all clean. Mm -hmm. But at least if you have some kind of a stormwater entity that can take and regulate the floor drains mm -hmm. and, and all this other stuff, and fees, fines, mm -hmm. what I mean, we're doing a lot of work nowadays with grease grease interceptors on restaurants. Mm -hmm. We're taking a ton of grease out of the system, which and we'll take all the grease. We don't want it in the system, but we'll take it out and dewater it. So we're, we're progressing on the sewer. Now it's time to progress on stormwater. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that wasn't actually my, my question mostly. But um, so stormwater, just looking back to, I think it came up in Brian's presentation. So this is now possibly going to be its own enterprise fund going forward. There's talks about that. And this was nestled under DPW, but now it's going to sewer. It's going to its own stormwater. Going to do its own, but it was under DPW before. Yeah. <clears throat> Historically, and across the Commonwealth, it has been under DPW. So people would call DPW with stormwater issues. Now it's <clears throat> now transitioning it's kind of, to you know it's through water resources. They're trying to put all the groups together. Yeah. So through yeah. sewer at the moment, and then we'll be it'll be sewer and water. Mark and myself, and, and then a stormwater manager will be the the ones kind of leading the task. Yeah. So no longer necessarily calling DPW for stormwater stormwater issues. Yeah. I mean, they're still going to be doing above the you know, anything on the surface. Yeah. Um, yeah. But there's there's a lot of stuff nowadays, and you know, we, we've had a lot of sinkholes forming lately because it's been such a dry summer. The whole groundwater has been coming out of the soils, and the, the roads are collapsing. I know mm -hmm. quite a few. Ways. We had a big one up on Union Street not too long ago. We just had another one on Broad. We had a two on West Chester Street. Yeah, Union. Right. Um, and this is all issues just because of holes in the pipes where groundwater gets all absorbed. Now that the sand starts to collapse. So. Um, it's it's going to be the first couple of years are going to be a real challenge. Mm -hmm. But we put the right people in place, I think we'll be able to do it. So, okay, I got a couple for you, David. Uh, first comment though, gray water and black water. I sense a color change in your trucks, gray uh, gray trucks with black water. <laughs> they, they won't be safer, but it'll be. All of our all of our trucks are white. Yeah, no, you're dealing with gray water and oh, black water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, no, I, we like to be seen. Actually. No, I, yeah. <laughs> that's why I said it's it's not any safer though. A um, couple different things. So I just would like to get a handle on the idea of the how the administrative work is going to be covered on this. I realize that typically that's a finance committee um, review, but when something like this comes up, uh, obviously on a smaller scale, typically the operating side of it is brand new. So we do consider that. Is there? What just briefly, if you could give us an idea, is this is going to be absorbed with another person? It's going to be absorbed into existing staff, at least initially. What are your thoughts on that? Ultimately, it's going to be more personnel involved. Now, hard to come by nowadays, for sure. Um, it's going to be similar to what I think happened with the sewer department when we transitioned away from the DPW. You know, town managers kind of they figure it out. Okay. And with the help from you know finance and everyone else, we we figured it out. You know, we kind of down pretty good. Now that's going to happen with the same thing with stormwater. You know, um, we're going to need a stormwater manager. There's no doubt about that at all. It's going to have to be someone that's all stormwater all the time. Um, and 
under the, you know, with assistance from the two departments, water and sewer, or however it ends up becoming. Um, so we haven't even got there yet. But. With your experience with sewer, you have an idea, of, obviously, of, you know, I mean, you painted a vivid picture of the, I think of the stormwater lines as like an old family circus Sunday morning cartoon where the kid goes to school and they track his little route with dashed lines and it's everywhere except for directly to the store. So with that in mind, you know, there's some unknowns, but do you're thinking this is a three, four person department, five person, 10 person? I would say it's probably a minimum of four, just, just for maintenance stuff. Not going, I mean, you're gonna have to have an administrator, some type of a person in the office that answers all that. So you're probably locking, looking at five staff and then a, and a uh, manager or whatever. I believe it's where it's gonna ultimately go. Will we be able to utilize forces between some departments? Quite possibly. Again, a lot of unknowns and well, you know, if we can kind of follow the pattern that we did with sewer and maybe we could be very successful. We're gonna have growing pains, no doubt about it. Okay. We'll and then growing pains with sewers. On the thank you. On the island wide drainage improvements and the CMOM, this is work. Give me a percentage roughly in-house and uh subbed out for each. Um a lot of the uh the stormwater stuff that's going on, there's there's a good portion of it that can be done in-house. We're doing a lot of our own stuff right now in-house. However, we do have contractors already under contract for work for the co three-year contracts for up to $200,000. A good portion of, I think, what we're going to find with the, the drainage stuff. Um, example, um, Cliff Road and Pilgrim Road. Pretty broad area of what it takes for a lot of folks. That's going to have to be something that's going to have to be contracted out. Yeah. You're going to have to be talking new infiltrators, new storm receptors, and everything else like that. Something small. I mean, replacing a catch basin or fixing a catch basin or fixing a sub sinkhole. A lot of that stuff might be able to be done either in house or with the internal contracts we already have in place. So you think 50 50? You think I would say 60, probably 40? You know, 50 50 is probably a good number to, to start with. But we've we've got sewer projects that we're trying to repair as we're making it. If it's over seven feet deep, we can't do it. Right. We don't have sure automatically it's going to go down. Hoisting the Toscana, or it's going to go to RBO, whoever we have contracts with. Um, and what about the CMOM? <laughs> the CMOM initially, it's you know the, the first year they're going to try to do. This is phase one. This is Children's Beach tertiary area. Um, <clears throat> ultimately, that's going to be moved into Easy Street, Washington Street. We're going to we're going to try the shoreline first because those all have gigantic <laughs> tributary areas, um, and to see what interconnections are still there or aren't there anymore. Um, so the first year they may do, we, we may get 90,000 or 100,000 linear feet in the Children's Beach area, depending on if the pipes are still there. I mean, that's stormwater. I mean, sewer was some unknown, but stormwater is really going to be some. So you'll have, you'll probably have that subbed out for the camera work. The, the, we already have a contract out and they should be starting. I think they're starting in the next week or so. National Water Main will be here. Again, they, they've done a lot of the, most of our CMOM work, and they're going to be doing all the initial cleaning and all the initial camering and GIS location. So that's part of phase one, which is getting ready to start. The money, the funding that's here looking for that will be to do the repairs going forward, whatever they find the first year or so. So that, so just to clarify for, you know, the folks at home eating popcorn and riveted to the screen, that the idea there with things that are already under contract is there were prior appropriations for stormwater related that yes. was when it was under DPW. So you're moving it over. Um, so, okay. So then I guess uh, the question for me is the realistic, how realistic is for the new levels of funding um, that that would be implemented in FY24? You feel pretty good about it? I think uh, construction sure. wise that $2 million, I think it's gonna be, just with just with Children's Beach, I think there's going to be a lot of stuff found that's going to have to be fixed pretty quick, fairly quick, and they'll have to be all bid out and everything like that. But um, I feel pretty confident, and if we do it just like we did sewer, um, I think we have a pretty good plan. And to bring on a firm that you know we have the same firm that's going to be doing this CMOM for stormwater that we did for sewer, so they already know the next the, the island, they already know. Our quirks and stuff like that. So, with Hazen and Sawyer doing our CMOM program for stormwater, we've already got an ace in the hole. 
because they just did the last five years of CMOS two. So that's going to be a huge help. Okay. Um, and they're doing a lot of our GIS stuff, our ARC stuff, our GIS. And, and so I really feel confident that right. I think we'll be. Two, two more for you, uh, more granular. Um, the Hulbert Ave corner, so Hulbert and Hulbert, that green space in Brant Point, that seems like that's kind of the stepchild just in terms of the list you gave, which was Children's Beach, then Easy Street, and working your way this towards Lily Pond. On the other side, it seems like Hulbert is probably the only one left in that area. What, where is that on the list in the CMOM or is it on the CMOM? Yeah, that's part of the children's beach. Oh, it is there. part of the children. That's okay, part of the children. just checking on that. We've looked at, we looked at that green space as a possible, even a potential to put some kind of a natural um, bioswale or retention area to try a tree before it enters into the system. So we've, we've talked with Vince, a lot of stuff's hinging on coastal resiliency. Uh, right. That's a huge unknown. Well, you bring a good segue to my next question, which is treatment. So once it's once it's considered terra firma, once it's on the land or it's in our stormwater system, there's a regulation that indicates that it needs to be treated, or is that just our policy? Currently, now, no. Um, they don't want you dumping oil and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, sure. Point. But eventually, it's going to come to the point where they're going to want testing of all the outfalls, and all. It, it, it's we know it's coming, but what regulation is going to look like? I don't know. Well, actually, I'm referring to like in a storm event. So say we get saltwater flooding. Okay. Do you have to take that out to the treatment plant? We do not. We do, that. There is some limited salt water that gets into our system because of in pipes or whatever. We haven't got to a manhole covers or frames, et cetera. All of that water still gets discharged into the harbor. Okay. Um, the salt water. That's why we put our big pump in place every winter at Children's Beach. That we can move that you know three thousand gallons a minute of storm flow back into the harbor where it came from. So when you refer to treatment, you're referring to more of a fresh water accumulation within the system that is overflowing. Ultimately, or just any of the runoff, you yeah. can put you can build natural wetlands and treat some of that the carbon sources and the you know the petroleum products, and then that will go into a, a storm septic to treat the oils, and then you basically have cleaner water that you can just discharge somewhere. Okay. So it sounds like a good policy. I, yeah, I just wanted to make sure I had an understanding. Um, other questions for David? I have one. Christy? I'm going to leave in a second. Yeah. 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 Play minute yeah. Um, David, David, yeah. David, the, um, uh, sorry. <coughs> uh, Baxter Road. Uh, I know you're pushing that out till next year. Um, the next few years, not this year, but the next few years are really heavy. Is there a reason you would not put that in this year? And start to build up the reserves because you know that's going to be an expensive project. Baxter Road is going to be expensive right now. There's just the unknowns of there's a trigger point. If, if Baxter Road gets to within 35 feet of the top of the block, mm -hmm. that triggers triggers. Okay, that road has to be shut down yeah. and everything has. To, right now, we've been maintaining well over 35 feet so far. Could that all change this year? Just mm -hmm. like, yeah, of course. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, could it be moved into 24? I it, it may be a little premature, but as long as it's a placeholder, I, I mean, I don't think there'd be any construction in 24 on it unless things change pretty drastically, which they could. So, um, but you know, and like I said, some of the other stuff that's out, maybe 25 and 26, we're going to be able to move them around them a little bit once we know a little, have a little more data and stuff. So. Yeah. Um, there are some heavy years. Maybe we can move them out a little bit further. I was just thinking with the introduction of the stormwater that um, maybe start funding Baxter Road, uh, continue to fund Baxter Road sooner than, than later. Well, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Policy. It's definitely. Yeah. It's we're, we're all talking about it yeah. all the time. So. I think part of the rationale, too, is the fact that we have, I mean, Arcadis is still actually in the process of doing the entire design review for what a potential relocation would look like. So um, I think the theory was that we put that out into 25 and let them finish what that looks like to get a better cost estimate of what we actually need. Because that number really, 10 million, I'm not entirely sure what it's based on at this point. And I know mm -hmm. that Arcadis has still been is deeply involved. In, in all of that work right now. 
it's really do you, morphed. Do you know what the exist? Is there an existing balance in that project? There's uh, which there's there's been a few smaller allocations okay. been put aside that have been are being used, and I think we actually in this town meeting, if I remember correctly, allocated money which we're using to cover the some of the engineers, the majority of the engineers. Right. right. So the ten million is a, a placeholder. It's a placeholder that. At this point, right now, to make sure that people realize that there's a very, it's probably going to be substantially more than ten. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Done. Kind of surprised. It's very so substantial amount. Probably my um, my expectation would be that it would be spread across multiple funds, being you know sewer carrying a portion, mm -hmm. water carrying a portion, yeah, and right. general fund carrying a portion for for each of their respective pieces. Makes sense. Yeah. And I understand, I understand that the, the, the distance from the shore, but also you're talking it's, this is abnormal height. Yeah. You know, I mean, and, and I mean, not only just town infrastructure, we've got to think, you know, National Greer, all the other ones all have to think about. Yeah. Them too, so. Okay. Uh, Barry. Yeah, I just I just wanted to concur with uh, Mr. Gray and uh, Mr. Turbot there that I, I think that where this is situated and it being out um into a different fiscal year makes a lot of sense um because the 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 design of what's going to have to happen out there is is has not been firm with the town um and there's there's a lot of different variables that that are going to enter into this when the final decision is made yeah the town's responsible for it because it is a public road and ultimately it is going to require some type of relocation but the question is where's that relocation point and I'll, once that's determined that's going to drive a lot of of the other things that you're going to have to do just like david said it's not just sewer it's going to be really relocating a lot of different utilities um and then just having having to figure out the dynamic of the roadway that's going to go through there too you're also talking about moving all those houses there's a lot going on and right now there's without really a firm pretty firm definitive plan I think this this makes sense just to leave it where it is right now. Okay. Thank, thank you. you, Barry. All right, uh, David, we'd like to thank you for the work. Thank your staff. We appreciate you know getting all the information together for supplemental and background. That's helpful when we're reviewing these. Something I said to drive two people away already. Yeah, <laughs> no. You, hey, they, 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 they lost a while. Though. They were riveted. They stuck through the whole presentation. So that's good. Um, so thanks again. We appreciate it. Oh, thank you guys right. for having me. Thank yeah, you for the questions. Yeah. And then... Uh, um, guys, we're going to just move quickly through the rest of our agenda, given the time. Um, mm -hmm. I think uh, discussion of potential new day and time for meetings. Barry, we touched on this. Uh, we didn't have a full group last week. We won't have a full group this week. Um, part of this is so that we do have a full group trying to come up with a day and a time that works for everyone. Um, we may not change it, but if you would just give some thought to this for perhaps the next meeting, we'll carry it over on our agenda. Mm -hmm. and um, have a little discussion on that. Uh, uh, somewhat part and parcel to that is change of meeting venue. Um, my concern here, especially when I'm in the big rig, is finding parking in this location. It's a hot spot for parking. Um, did we get an update? Can we get an update on? Sure, we can't move it. We can't because move it. Because we, um, they've been trying to use the community room for regulatory boards and Due to the setup in there, it requires NCTV to be there to operate the cameras, and we don't have budgetary funds allocated for anything other than the regulatory boards at this juncture. All right. Um, and uh, want a comment, Mr. Mr. Chair? Before we get off that topic, yeah, sure. Thank you, Brian. Have you have you talked? I mean, the the um, the conference room there in in the uh, at two fairgrounds with plus. I think is set up on the same level uh, to be able to handle that. Have has, have you talked to anyone there? Because parking is not an issue there. We, um, we just it's to, just a thought. Um, so I'll answer both questions at the same time. We have not talked to the water company. Um, no. no. Uh, first, Mr. Chair, uh, mm -hmm. we can circle back with them, and we have not explored. Uh, plus, we were asked about using the community room, which is yeah. Where we, yeah. we first explored yeah so we can explore other options to see if they are viable mm -hmm. um, and give the committee an update at the meeting next week if you wouldn't mind and i think um my preference would be want to comment simply because it's got a little bit more space when we have for instance airport comes in and they typically have 
four people, school comes in. Um, I just to restate prefer this informal venue. The um, the you know the community meeting room is a little formal, I think, but you know it works. Um, so I would appreciate you guys checking into that, maybe letting us know at the next meeting. Um, report writing group update on action items. Were we able to get anything from Plum on the additional footnote? And uh, um, no, he's been on vacation, so we're just waiting till he comes back to follow up with him. Okay, can we get an? Can we set an action deadline for that? Um, like, when do you think it reasonably it would be? Because also he's going to be giving us something, a template on the uh, report. He is. Um, I actually. We'll have to find out when he's back, Mr. Chair. I don't know. Okay, maybe you could back, um, we'll do that. And... Would you mind? No. And then uh, Sue and I could be informed and we could target that on the agenda yeah. uh, appropriately. Uh, again, the footnote aspect is more important. And it, maybe I can interface with one of you guys offline because it's kind of difficult to access it um, for us when we're, you know, Richard or I when we're working on it. So I don't. So when you get to the point where we're going to speak to him, please let me know and we can we can interact accordingly. Um, nothing on C. Uh, we did meet. Did we do an interim meeting? We had a discussion and I think we covered quite a bit of ground uh, for the work group members. Uh, Barry, what's going on here is typically I've been writing the annual recommendation report and recommendations, compiling it, putting it together, making it look pretty for the group. Uh, and we decided that it would become a uh, committee project and we are getting support of the finance department uh, through the finance department, the database uh, software, which I'll explain to you all offline what that's all about, mm -hmm. uh, to compile the data and put it into uh, at least a raw format that is very similar to what we currently produce as a report, uh, such that we can then uh, fine tune with uh, Comments, footnotes, some of our narrative, and then uh, fonts and lay and uh, coloring and things like that, without having to do a lot of layout uh, lifting. Mm -hmm. But that's just a little background for you on what that's all about. Mm -hmm. um, green sheet committee reports. Uh, Barry, uh, as our new member, our liaison to the NPDC. What this is basically, I'll be very quickly about this. I want everybody to get out of here. Um, <laughs> we can actually maybe touch base. Yeah, yeah I would be agree. wonderful. Um, good of the order. Any comments for any, anyone? Excellent. Just uh, did it very, very quickly. Please. Yeah, I, I have to apologize for last meeting um, about cutting in and out, trying to uh, keep in touch with you guys through the steamship and, and there just didn't work. So I, ha I have to apologize that that was such a messy ordeal on my end. Well, uh, no, apology. Happening. No apology, no, sir. We appreciate it. And I hear the uh, rate increase that this steamship is going to go into improve Wi-Fi. So uh, <laughs> everyone on the island will be thrilled with that. I'll believe it when I see it at that point. Yeah. But uh, I just want to say, too, thank you very much. And I'm thrilled to be on this committee through the MP and EDC. So and we're glad you. to have you. All right. Thanks. And welcome aboard officially. Thank you. Um, data next meeting is Thursday. Uh, same same time, same place, different date. And um, with that, I would uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. On your motion, Richard. Aye. PJ? Aye. Barry? Aye. And I'm an aye. Thanks, everyone. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Brian and Sue. Thank you all. Okay.